and one of the biggest ones at the moment being violence, which is the concern of every single Zambian citizen. And so as we go towards elections from the church, we are offering our continued commitment to the Lord and to the citizens for prayer. But at the same time, we are also offering our opportunity to be able to sit together and dialogue. And this is the opportunity that we see here today. So our counsel is simply that we sit truly as brothers and sisters together desiring to see the preservation of peace for our one and only Zambia. There is much more that unites us than that which divides us. So we'd like to make an appeal that we be tolerant, be loving, we be frank and open and be able to discuss whatever is before us, even the hardest of issues. They say that an open rebuke is better than secret love. So it is all right for us to be able to, in a loving atmosphere, counsel and rebuke one another and advise one another. And it is our prayer, as we have requested God Almighty, that the promise we have read in Isaiah chapter 60, verse 18, will become the reality for Zambia. No longer will violence be heard in your land, no ruin or destruction within your borders, but you will call your walls salvation and your gates grace. May God bless us and grant great victory to all of us in this meeting. I thank you.
around us who have been invited as witnesses. So I thought I should make that clear. And this is why you see, you know, that we are more than perhaps the numbers that I mentioned. We have requested to meet all presidential candidates participating in this election to discuss the unfolding events in our country during political party campaigns. All aspiring presidential candidates were informed of the meeting and received an apology from the president of the Green Party who will participate by phone. On the 9th of July, 2016, the commission decided to suspend political party campaigns in Osaka and Namara districts for 10 days due to the rise in political violence in some districts which regrettably resulted in injury, loss of life, and property. Since the suspension, the Commission has been closely monitoring events on the ground. And in our assessment, the political environment in Lusaka and Namara has quieted, but it definitely can be better. Feedback filtering through su suggests that some political parties did not entirely comply with the directive and some vehicles branded in political party colors have been reported on the streets of Lusaka. The commission had requested the Zambia police to ensure that political parties and the candidates comply with the directive. The commission would like, therefore, to remind you, as leaders of the respective political parties, that you take full responsibility of the actions of your supporters and cadres. It is the responsibility of all political party leaders participating in elections to restrain their members and cadres from provoking their opponents and inciting violence during campaigns. These elections will come and go, and our country, Zambia, will remain. Why then do we want to make this election a matter of life and death? As stakeholders in the electoral process, we all have a role to play in ensuring peaceful elections. For us as a commission, we will continue to perform our mandate as provided for in the law. The Commission can, however, not succeed in performing its mandate without your total cooperation. When you choose to disregard the provisions of the Electoral Code of Conduct and campaign as if you are the only one in the contest, then you are not cooperating with us. Much of the Commission has been given powers in the Electoral Process Act. It's not the wish of the Commission to disqualify candidates anyhow, unless compelled to do so. I repeat that. It is not the wish of the Commission to disqualify candidates anyhow, unless compelled to do so. I therefore challenge you to demonstrate leadership in your speech and actions, so that your members will emulate your behavior and conduct. It is also the responsibility of the Zambia Police Service to ensure that perpetrators of violence and anyone caught abrogating the electoral code of conduct is dealt with firmly, without fear or favor, irrespective of which political party they belong to. It is possible, and it has happened in many other countries in the world, that we can live in unity despite our diversity that is the hallmark of democracy. I therefore appeal to all the political party leaders, the electorate and the public in general, to embrace peace and not be used as instruments of violence. We only have one country, Zambia, 
and we should guard our hard-earned democracy and peace jealously. The Commission is aware that political party leaders met earlier in the year with the church and made a pledge for peace. The question that begs an answer is, why you, as political party leaders, have not honored the pledge that was made? Why has that pledge not been honored? Remember, the world is watching us and perhaps asking the same question as to why you have not honored your own pledge. You made it, you agreed, signed, and has been honored in the bridge. As we draw towards the end of the suspension of political party campaigns in Lusaka and Namara, I would like you to publicly, publicly pledge and commit yourselves unequivocally as presidential candidates and political parties to peaceful campaigns for the remaining period up to 11th of August. I further would like us to agree and affirm that we will respect our campaign timetables, which should allow each political party candidate space and time, and to campaign in all parts of Zambia without any due and due hindrance. May I repeat this paragraph, please? Listen very, very attentively. I would like that we respect our campaign As for Zambia Police, the Commission would like to see that you apply the Public Order Act fairly as you maintain law and order. May I remind you that it is the people of Zambia who have the final say on who becomes president after 11th of August 2016. Do not therefore How then will they vote for you if you do create fear or intimidate them? He said, speak to them on issues that affect them and how you intend to govern if elected. Finally, all presidential candidates and their political parties have a duty to ensure that there is a peaceful election environment. And the Zambian electorate should not have to endure the trauma of intimidation and violence. May God bless Zambia. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Like I announced earlier on, colleagues from uh, the press. Um, I will request that you leave us now. We'll have a cross-door session.